We are back here on the Business Forum Show. I'm Kevin Hunter with Dave Ford. Dave coming to us from Action Coach out of Minnesota. We're here in the Northwest Digital News uh, studios and we're gonna be talking about five dysfunctions of a team. Dave, one of my, one of my favorite quotes is this quote that you shared from uh, Tom Peters. Most employees are motivated, energetic, committed, enthusiastic, and loyal, except for the eight hours they're working for you. <laughs> right, <laughs> absolutely. Several years ago as a young man, I was working for Rollerblade at the time. I got a chance to attend a seminar by Dr. Um, Edwards Deming and people remember him as the guy who launched this, if Japan can, why can't we? And he had made the comment at, at this seminar that 95% of all the problems in the organization were direct result of leadership and or systems implemented by leadership. One, one of the execs from IBM got up and challenged him on this statistic and asked him, how did he dare make this number that, how can anybody say something like that could be so high? And Deming's only response back to him was, well, there's only a reason one why I said 95 is that I wasn't sure if it was 97 or 98 or 99, and I'm just being conservative. Right, I, absolutely. The, the, whole, the whole room busted up laughing. But yeah, so he understood very much what Tom Peters did on this line. Let's start with the pyramid that you have here, the absence of trust. How big a deal is this? Well, it's the base of the pyramid for a reason. It's the foundation. If you don't have trust in the office, nothing else is going to matter. It doesn't mm -hmm. make any difference what you're doing. If your employees don't trust you, if your employees don't trust each other, if you don't have trust, the rest of the pyramid doesn't make any difference. It's just not going to work. Everything crumbles based on a weak foundation. Correct. There have been terms that I've heard used, uh, safety. How safe is it? to bring up these uh, voices of opposition or how safe is it to make a mistake? Well, absolutely. That's that's definitely a piece of it. If you if you make a mistake and the first thing that happens is somebody jumps all over you and jumps down your throat, you don't trust anything that ever goes on. If, if you voice your opinion and you immediately get shut down and well, you're never going to voice your opinion again, it's it's uh, we were doing an exercise um, once it was a it was a group exercise, kind of a problem solving exercise, and one of the people in the group had figured it out, and she had stepped out and she was directing everybody um, to here's the next thing and here's the next thing, and they were they were two steps from solving, and I was watching what was going on, and all of a sudden some other guy in the room, which and he comes up with the, the next step in this, where it was all about ego for him. Oh, mm -hmm. no, I've got it. And he jumps in and starts talking over her. Mm -hmm. The only problem was he didn't actually know what the steps were. So he ended up sending them down a wrong, the wrong path. But because now this person, oh, I don't, my voice doesn't matter. You're going to talk over me. Um, she doesn't trust him any longer. She's no longer in a safe environment. She steps back into her spot and didn't speak the rest of the time. And they never finished the exercise. Mm -hmm. She had them two steps from completing the exercise and she was, I could tell by what the direction she was giving them. She knew what the solution was mm -hmm. because there was no longer trust in what was going on. She stepped back into the, into her place and didn't participate the rest of the time. What's number two on the pyramid? That's the status and ego. That's the, when you look at it, like in that particular example, the, this guy wasn't worried about the result of solving the problem. He wanted to be the one that looked like he made the, he solved the problem. He mm -hmm. wanted to be the big shot. Normally, the reason that you go all the way up to the top is if you aren't focused on what really is the actual right result, you're gonna, your ego is gonna get in way in the in the way. Other people's egos are gonna get in the way, and that's gonna be the biggest impactor to absence of trust. That's the reason we go all the way up to the top of the pyramid after the bottom. Is if you don't have the bottom, it's likely the reason you don't have the bottom is because there's a problem at the top. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with the leadership. There's a problem with the status and ego. There's a problem with inattention to results that gives you an absence of trust. This wanting credit, it's just amazing yep. how, how much that um, permeates and how big a problem that is in organizations and, and is really uh, obvious in any organization that's floundering is that this desire for credit. And you and I have heard this a lot from business owners over the years. If the boss doesn't do it, it doesn't get done right. And right. 
Wow, I can't imagine working for a more miserable person uh, at all. Crazy stuff. Okay, so you also have on this uh, on, on this pyramid fear of conflict. Let's talk about that. Yep. Well, I mean, that's the, the idea. So if there's absence of trust, generally speaking, that also means people are going to be afraid to voice their opinion. They're going to be afraid of conflict. Now, people don't like conflict uh, by nature. They try to avoid conflict by nature. Mm -hmm. That said, conflict is necessary in order to move things forward. There's good conflict and there's bad conflict. Mm -hmm. And if people won't voice their opinion, it's because they're afraid of conflict. And the reason they're afraid of conflict is because there's an absence of trust. Mm -hmm. Everything else builds because there's an absence of trust. So you have to look at it and go, okay, why do I always have this person or these three people in my office never voice their opinion? They never say anything mm -hmm. because they have a fear of conflict. They have mm -hmm. a fear of conflict because they don't trust what's going to happen when they, when they voice their opinion. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, they made a statement, they said what they needed to say, or they, they gave feedback or they gave input, and the, the response was not a positive response for them. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to do it again. I like that this is also noted as artificial harmony, because yeah. I remember somebody using the title pseudo community, where a bunch of people in the organization were pretending like there was no conflict, yet there was constant conflict behind the scenes. But everybody Correct. pretending like there was none and everybody's getting along. And yet I remember in this company, almost daily meetings with the boss behind closed doors, everybody wondering, oh, who's being thrown under the bus today? It was right. crazy. But on the surface, we are all having a great old time out in the front office. Yeah. And it's it's all fake. It's just it's just artificial harmony. It's all fake. And it boils down to the base. There's a you have a big problem with trust. Mm hmm. Does this point a little bit to who the owner might be hiring into the organization? Is there, does this point sure. to a hiring problem too? But yeah, it, it points to a hiring problem. It points to a leadership problem. Yeah, there's several areas this points to. You may be not hiring the right people. The person that's doing the hiring may not be hiring the right people. Um, you may just have an overall leadership or direction problem. Let's go to uh, lack of commitment. They, 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 build, they build up, right? So mm -hmm. if, if you have somebody that maybe they feel like there's trust there or, or, they don't, or they're not afraid of conflict, but they're never going to commit to anything. They're never going to step out and, okay, I'll get that happen. I'll make that happen. I'll get that done. And you, you have people that they have a fear of commitment. They, uh, you give them a, a, a job to do or a task or a goal and they never really say, yep, that I'll do that or I'll take that on or I'll have it done by this point in time. And the reason for that is because it's just not it's, it's just just the next step mm -hmm. that is beyond the trust, beyond the fear of conflict. Um, I don't want to make any commitments to anything because uh, I don't. What if I don't make it? What if I don't accomplish what I said I was going to do? If I say I'm going to have that done by the end of the week and I don't get it done, what happens? Everybody's wondering what this last piece of the pie, let's talk about avoidance of accountability. Man, that is one nasty word for some people, isn't it? Well, it is, and you know, people are afraid of, of accountability all over the place. I mean, I'll, we'll have, uh, I remember one client, we were talking about you know how much they were producing and, and putting a production number up there, and there was there was a lot of conversation around well we can't put up how much we produced i mean because everybody will be they'll, they'll feel like you're you're micromanaging them or, or you're gonna they didn't produce enough and you're gonna jump down their throats and no we just want to know how much you're producing that's all we want to do we just and we had multiple conversations to get them under to understand this is not about jumping down anybody's throat because you didn't produce enough we just want to know what's possible once we worked through, we had to work through, there was some issues with that particular group's management, with their manager, and there was, there was an absence of trust. So we had to work through all of that before we could start doing it. We simply post started posting, here was your production for the day. Here was the mm -hmm. group's production for the day. What happened over the next month, they almost doubled their production. Mm -hmm. Simply because they started looking at it and going, well, that was what we did yesterday. Now we can beat that today. 
We can beat that today. Mm -hmm. They just kept beating what they had done before. It, the reality, though, is in most cases, people won't even want to put something out there because they're too afraid somebody. Well, if, if you do that, you're just going to look you're, you're just trying to find somebody to fire. Mm -hmm. You just you want to put numbers out there because you want to see who you need to fire. Again, it's just the next level in that the whole pyramid. It's it's all boils down to I, I, I always talk to people. If you have a fear of conflict, if you have a lack of commitment, if you have an avoidance of accountability, find out where your trust issue is mm -hmm. because if you, had a, if you didn't have a trust issue you wouldn't have that problem so you have to find out where your trust issue is look at what your challenges are on your team if nobody wants to be accountable for anybody for anything if, if, if you've got a lack of commitment if you've got a fear of conflict you have a trust issue somewhere so the bottom is line is most, if you work on your trust issues and you create results orient the organization towards results, you can you can solve these other three pieces of the pie and have a highly Correct. functional and highly performing team. Correct, absolutely 100%. All right, if you're a leader in any organization and specifically in business, I hope you're paying attention because all the fingers point back to you. It's an opportunity to do something new and fresh in your organization. Correct. Kevin Hunter with Dave Ford here on the Business Forum Show. Thanks for joining us. This concludes today's live programming on Northwest Digital News. Thanks for joining us for this special broadcast. Heard around the world in more than 70 countries on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, Facebook, and Twitch TV. If you enjoyed a story or guest we had here on Northwest Digital News and would like to strut your stuff on the broadcast, email us today at wainfo2017 at gmail.com or call or text 360-545-3501. We're always interested in unique stories, topics, and guests to share with our worldwide audience. Before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and comment on the live stream. And for those of you who'd like to financially support the broadcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Northwest Digital News. We thank you for your patronage. On behalf of Chris Bornstead, Kyle Torgerson, Stephanie Hunter, and all the people that made this broadcast possible, I'm Kevin Hunter. Till next time, take care.